EV sales collapsing, used price of EVs at rock bottom, ensuring your EV will cost you more than your car. Dave Takes It On looks into the EV world with much longer in-depth investigation every Sunday. Today we find that the headlines are, well, both true and misleading. Sensational journalism strikes once again. So what have I found? Well, spoiler alert, look behind the headlines and you find EVs are poised to utterly dominate and far sooner than most people could even imagine. Find out why. Data is data, and that means as long as it's accurately gathered, it is true. How we interpret that data is totally open to debate. Have you ever heard an MP state that we've invested twice as much this year as we did in year X, or that unemployment in June in year Y was twice what it is today? Is it true? And why do they choose those specific dates? Well, those dates have been very carefully chosen to make a comparison that's specifically designed to mislead and make the latest data look brilliant, look closer, and the comparison date is probably a single specific time when the figures showed a huge anomaly from the normal or average. This is always used by politicians, and it's also used regarding the weather. Today's storm is the worst since December 1963 implying that, well, this was happening 50 years ago, nothing to worry about now. Well, the reality could well be that the storm in 1963 was absolutely a total exception, totally out of the blue back then, while today these storms, very similar, may be almost everyday occurrences, and this one they are talking about was just a tiny bit more extreme, tipping it over the edge. The data holds true, but the interpretation differs dramatically. There's another example that the climate change deniers often quote that the sea temperatures off the coast of Greenland is actually getting colder than at any time in the past, supposedly proving global warming is a myth. Well, data proves that temperature readings do actually record this. They're true. But the scientists also have measured and analysed and discovered why this is true. So in a time when everywhere else the oceans are seeing absolutely huge rises. The truth here is that the Arctic is heating up at a much faster rate than at any time in recent history, and that the glaciers are melting at a much faster rate than ever before. Well, this meltwater, once totally negligible, having no effect on the temperature of the oceans around Greenland, is now of such a huge quantity that when it flows into the ocean, it really cools it down, down to near freezing. Move offshore a few miles outside this effect, and the temperature is also at a record high in line with everywhere else in the world. Data is data, but what you do with it is usually affected by who is interpreting it. So beware of the headlines in the media. They're usually designed for a specific purpose. They're either to get across the owner's personal opinion, or more commonly to provoke a reaction to increase sales or clicks. Well, what does the data say for the sale of new EVs? Well, the first fact, whatever region or national variations the manufacturers apply, there are more EVs being sold this year than last year. Many more. So, a bit like taking that temperature at a very specific point, you can always look at a specific country or manufacturing, you can find boom or bust to suit your headline. Well, if overall sales are up, which are down? Well, it turns out that the legacy auto EV cars in the biggest market in the world, China, are collapsing down to almost zero. See, once a Mercedes was a status symbol of prestige, quality and taste. Chinese drivers loved driving around them. It put them into a higher social class out on the roads. And those cars were really good and well worth it. But the Chinese love their gadgets and they love that status symbol. So when the legacy auto like Mercedes and Audi, <coughs> made their first generation EVs using exactly the same body shell and appearance as the old ICE version, they met a very mixed reception. Then when the drivers found, having bought them, that the tech on board was older and worse than the tech on their own homemade EVs at half the price or less, the end was in sight. But they persevered. Till today, the inevitable collapse has happened. They sold some, but the market demanded more. The status symbol had ceased to exist. Biggest surprise is that the legacy automakers didn't see this coming. All their eggs in one basket, and now that basket is empty. One after another, they've stopped selling. 
Some have gone bust, others simply just pulled out. Still, a brave few kept trying, but it's all in vain. So use Chinese data for legacy EV sales into China. Yeah, it's pure doom and gloom. These are your headlines, but look at China sales figures for all EVs. You get a very different result. Sales of EVs in China are still booming despite recessions, political upheavals. And it's local Chinese firms that are picking up the business, taking it away from legacy. And yeah, Tesla is also a major Chinese manufacturer and is taking the lion's share of all those sales. Media reports that BYD is overtaking Tesla in EV sales. True, but BYD sales figures include any vehicle with a battery, i.e. hybrids. And the vast bulk of BYD sales is still actually hybrids. Their pure BV sales are quite pitiful against those dramatic headlines. As are all the other local Chinese manufacturers. I've not calculated it accurately, but in pure BV sales, Tesla is likely to be greater than the next nine in the top 10 list. And only one legacy manufacturer features VW. But this quarter, they are probably going to drop totally off that top 10 list. If you chose Norway for your figures, you see a totally different picture, with 90% of all vehicles now EVs, or California with 25% adoption rate. Yeah, California now sells EVs for a quarter of all the cars sold. Europe is similar, so is Australia and Canada. So it's just a little, and most of the world is now adopting EVs as the standard. What's going on? Well, in some places, government grants make EVs far cheaper than ICE. I just received this comment from, I think, at Paul-CJ1WB. Sorry, I don't know your name. But he states that a Tesla Model 3 with all available grants in the states, like New Jersey and Colorado, costs just $26,000. That's far cheaper than the cheapest Toyota Camry ICE. Which would you buy? And Toyota claim there's no market, no demand for EVs. Or oh, didn't they also just lose the best-selling car manufacturer in the world to an EV? Well... Well, let's take a quick look around the world and see actual data. I will add my own comments and opinions, but the data should be enough for most people to make up their minds. So where do we go from here? Well, where are EV sales heading? We'll look at the States, the biggest market for cars outside China, just. We now come down to interpretation, but some trends are really easy to see. Where EVs are sticker price equal with ICE, EV sales will continue to grow. Where sticker prices are lower in EVs than in inferior new ICE cars, they will rocket. When the price of EVs in the US drops to below $25,000 list price, and the Inflation Reduction Act subsidies and tax breaks are still in existence, the new ICE market will be devastated. And don't forget the used car market. The average price of a used car in the States hovers around the $30,000 mark. When an EV at list price drops down to 25 k Many petrolheads will simply give in and admit it makes more sense to own an EV than an older ICE car that needs constant repairs and servicing and one day will totally fail. The used ICE car market will practically cease to exist. And a few years later, when those sub 25k cars hit the market and they are sold as really cheap used cars, the transition from ICE to EV will be guaranteed. This will not take as long there as here due to those subsidies. In Europe, there are subsidies in many countries, none in the UK, of course, and Europe does not have the same anti-China stance as the States. Yeah, Ursula von der Leyen is talking about Chinese import restrictions or tariffs, but sad to say, even with extra tariffs, the Chinese will be cheaper. Look at India, which has a 100% tariff on imported cars. Nissan, VW and Tesla are all seeing the opportunity there rather than the problem. Tariffs won't stop Chinese cars in Europe, they'll just make the transition a bit longer. And now the homemade manufacturers like Citroën, Persia and Renault are responding and they're advertising the launch of sub 20,000 euro EVs next year. Even though the legacy makers will offer really inferior cars compared to the Chinese sub 20k EVs, enough people will stick to brand loyalty or local manufacturers to make them a success. Are the Chinese really better? Well, a future video in this series, shown on Sundays, will look at the differences, but just a few examples I spotted recently. 
vehicle to grid, vehicle to load, is now almost standard on really cheap Chinese cars. LFP batteries have taken over. Swivel front seats in even really budget models allowing easy entry or the ability to sit and face your rear passengers. Well, not ideal for the driver while driving, but it's absolutely great if you stop for a picnic. Here in the UK, well, I'm totally wishy-washy. Nobody knows where we're heading, what the government is likely to do next. And sadly, that even includes our own Prime Minister and Cabinet Ministers. If he's are here to stay, our EV adoption will take longer, but is now unstoppable. And we will see a huge change towards EVs next year, when the Chinese and European budget models, below £20,000, start to arrive. Below 20000 and comparable in size, that makes them cheaper than a Ford Focus and a Vauxhall Astra. What would you buy? New EV or used ice with 20,000 miles for the same price? Well, thanks for watching to the end. Hope you enjoyed this special EV look and will want to see future videos that will be released every Sunday. Subscribe so you'll be notified. I'm Dave.